What they think of you is not more important than your own well-being. What I even think of you is not more important than your own well-being. If you want to cry to the point where you just cry for 20 minutes, everyone's just like, and even me, I'm like, she's ruining the seminar. No, no. Do it. That's the whole thing. Do it. If that is what is most helpful and beneficial to you, then it's more important than what anything I could say. Yeah, so there is no control I have currently. So I just let it come Good. out. It's just when I lay in my bed in the evening and I watch the videos on um, Instagram and, and the energy which you give the people and the people can take this very insight from them. It's uh -huh. so touching. Thank and you. I love this. <laughs> I don't know if anyone has seen this video, but there is one girl sitting on the floor with you. She has brown hairs. Like, mm -hmm. I can't. It's so, so much. What spoke to you about that video? Um, I think a topic, everyone is so into it, not being enough. And this is a fucking big thing nowadays, really. The biggest thing. Yeah, and I want everyone sitting here inside, please, every second is your life and your light. And when I see people like you, or when I, not, not people like you, energies, when, if we would not be human beings, if we would be energies, you would be such a, a bright energy. Um, it comes from hard work, I know, but I would, l I would wish that people know their worth every second. So. That's why I'm crying right now, because it's touching and I can't control what I'm talking, but thank you so much. I'm so glad that I saw one night I could not sleep your account. Amazing. Ooh, I have to breathe now, sorry. Do <laughs> <laughs> you look like a koala now? <laughs> well, no. Koala bear? Don't even... <laughs> Although that's funny, don't even worry about that. Right now, no one cares what you look like. Meaning, what you just talked about here came from the heart. It was so raw and so authentic. Were any of you thinking like, do I see a tear in that eye? What you just did is the same reason when people look at my content. I mean, some do, but you're not necessarily thinking like, look at but the hair, because you're focused, like you said, on the energy. And you just delivered a passionate, raw, and authentic speech that spoke to everyone. But, yes. and this is where your ego is not going to like it. That was great. But let's go into you. Something about that video, not feeling good enough, really spoke to you, inspired you, to the point where you're here. Why don't you believe you're not good enough? It's a good question. I don't know. It's if you watch my videos, yeah. what do I say about I don't know? Yeah. <laughs> Never ever say I don't know. For all of you, why? You know. You know. You might not know. <laughs> this is why it's nuanced. If you've ever read the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, this is a finance book. What he says in that book is if you see something that's too expensive for you, never ever say I cannot afford that. Why? Because then your mind moves on. Oh, I can't afford that. Instead, he says, shift it to how can I afford that? And now you start thinking about solutions. When you start introspecting, saying, I don't know, is like, oh, well, let's move on then. Let's, let's not think about this any deeper. We don't know. Maybe you don't know, but never say, I don't know. Say, well, what if I do? And stay in this state of openness. Like, no joke, if all of you, just five minutes a day, ask yourself some of these difficult, uncomfortable questions. I also call these shadow questions. Right? For all of you here, why do you believe you're not good enough? Now, what's the most common defense? Well, I don't believe that. Okay, well, consciously sure. Is there a part of you that believes it? Yeah. Well, maybe. Well, where did that come from? I don't know. That's resistance. Move along. I don't know. There's nothing here. If you were to stay with it and be like, well, what if a part of me does? And just wait for something to surface. Just five minutes. Maybe nothing will. But do it enough few days in a row, a few weeks in a row, eventually some gold will surface. That's that open state of introspection. 
But what if I do? And you just wait. You don't rush it. You don't force it. Just spend some time waiting and you will be surprised by how much gold will surface. So, why are you not good enough? Breathe into it. Even in this seminar setting, there's no need to rush it. I think because if I show the world the real me, I'm not fitting in the society. Hell yeah. Yeah, but it pays my rent, so. Well, what's more important? Um, now, this is controversial. Oh. Well, yes, a roof is important, but if the only way for you to get a roof is to continuously compromise your authenticity, that's what we were talking about. That's a, a golden prison. I know, that's why I quit my job six months ago, but then I couldn't pay my rent, so I got a new one. <laughs> well, now again, on the, on the external side for everyone, yes, you have to be smart in terms of navigating this thing called life. But there are ways, if you're creative enough, to still design your life in a way where you can still be you. Guess what? Do you know why I moved away from Switzerland? Uh -uh. Any of you know? So I grew up in, uh, near Lausanne, the French part. I was extremely shy and I loved doing music growing up. Why? Because I had so much anxiety I couldn't express myself here, but I could by playing the guitar. And I was playing guitar with a friend and I wanted to move to LA and do something expressive because that's what was true to me. And I viewed Switzerland as this dead-end rut. Uh, great for raising kids and great for retiring, but not the in-between. That was my own personal view. Now, when I moved to LA, my parents were highly against it. Why? Because I quit university, and when I say, hey, I'm going to LA. Now imagine you're my parents. I come to you. I was in uh, Ashose Business School in Lausanne. And I'm like, hey, I'm quitting. I'm gonna go do music in LA. They're like, oh, wait, do you have a plan? Nah, I'm gonna wing it. What would you think? Well, hey, how about you finish your degree or play it a little bit smarter? I'm like, no, no, I'm just gonna go wing it. It's what I am meant to do. They were highly against it. And the probability of me even making it was very low. Looking back, a younger me even now is like, well, that was a little reckless. So if I were to redo it now, I'd be a little smarter about it. But what got me to make that final move was sitting down and saying, you know what? Even if I were to fail, this was the contract, the personal contract I made with myself. I was like, even if I were to fail, be homeless, never make it, um, and just be this old kind of guy in the street just playing his guitar, is it worth it and does it beat the alternative? And the answer was yes. Now, it doesn't have to be that extreme for you. And once more, I didn't continue in music. I was also aware of different opportunities. Now, funny enough, my life now is pretty similar, where what is this? This is the concert. What are the videos you see on YouTube? Those are the songs recorded. What's the content? That's the composing of the songs, seeing what clicks with different people. So it hits on the same, you could say, inner fulfillment and self-expression. But I would rather do that thing I love, even if I made less money and things didn't go according to plan. And guess what? I was homeless a few times there too. It was chaotic at first, but that was much more worth it. And that'd be the question for you. It's, well, maybe right now, if I were to truly be me, I'd lose my job. In which case, that's not a job that's authentic to you. Now, it's not always in extremes where it's job or no job, but then that's where you have to use your analytical mind and think, well, what are some avenues or opportunities that do pay, so I do have a roof over my head, but where I have more room to be me? And the cool thing with the internet is, guess what? There's a lot of opportunities unlocked. So what's so scary about looking into them or taking them? I don't know. So four weeks ago, <laughs> nine, I know it, I know it, I know it. Four weeks ago, um, I opened an Instagram account. Good. And it went through the decke, through the roof. Roof, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, but I'm um, anonymous on the site. And now I have like 10K followers and I'm afraid of everything there. Why? Because it's like what you said, the, the what, so, Last time I, I lost like 500 followers and I cried the whole evening because I couldn't stand that. Also I, I wanted to ask every single person of them why, what happened, why? 
it's it's so and I know that it's stupid. I'm afraid of the It's not stupid. I'm afraid of perhaps it's afraid of my own light. I don't know because if I would live my own light then I would have to come to to kick out everything else of my life and I'm afraid also everything else which stops me in growing. And this is a big thing for me currently. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm talking all this stuff here. So what do you post on this Instagram? Is it videos of you, pictures of you? Um, no, I, um, it's not a support page. I, I, so I like writing and I write about um, a person who gets out of all this we were talking about right now. What would be the number one action to take to really grow it that you've been holding back from doing? Ooh. And don't say I don't know. It's a feeling. Um, I would need security, but I don't know from. Say you had it. What would you do? What would be the action? I would make a job out of it. I would. How? Find, what would be the first step? Um, meeting people somewhere to make something good. So you'd make a post, say, "Hey, I want to meet some people on here." What would be the action step? I want a specific, practical action step. Giving them a mix of fun and um, experienced pain I had in my life. And more showing, specific, more tangible. Um, like, talking to people who had years of anxiety and depression because I had this and showing them that with um, hard inner work and all this stuff and fun and being vulnerable and all this so that, that we are all human, that we are all the same, that we all could do so much better if we would not hide, but I'm still hiding myself, so it's a big fight. Okay. Well, what about going on your Instagram account, doing a story, saying you want to talk to some people about this, or you want to do an Instagram live and oh do God. some split screens? <laughs> <laughs> How about no. announcing that? Do you have your phone on you? <laughs> Let's get your phone. Let's do it. Let's do a live. Not a live. A story <laughs> announcing a live. There's your phone. Let's do it. Yes. Here's what you do. Just a short story, video story, saying, hey, I've been wanting to do this for a while, but I want to do a live where I talk to some of you and see what's going on. Would any of you be interested? Send me a DM. That's it. I That's all you have to do. <laughs> well, speak from the heart, but here's all you have to say. I want to do an Instagram live at some point to talk to Can some of you. Together? Sure. Oh. Let's do it. But someone has to hold. Can you hold the mm -hmm. camera? Sure. <laughs> oh, God, I'm I have to take a bonbon. <laughs> This also brings up for everyone, we all think rejection so scary, but usually it's fear of success that holds us back. And notice how the steps, we already know them deep down inside. All of you, you know one or two steps to get you a little bit closer to that ideal life, to your goals. Maybe not all the steps, but you know one or two. Yet, <gasps> that inner resistance, it's no joke. Oh, God, that inner resistance. Yeah, now this is normal. This is why I keep saying, Action, trigger, release, release repeat. repeat. You do an action, right action. What we're going to do now. Okay. It's going to trigger resistance within you, trigger fear that you can then let go of, and then you repeat. It's not hustle, it's not discipline, it's not self attack, like do it, you idiot. No, it's taking that action to trigger and release. Here you go. I'll put you, you can put the code in. We'll go straight to Instagram. And here's what you're going to say. Speak from the heart and say, hey, I've been, I want to do a live at some point to speak to some of you. Would you be interested? Let me know. That's all you have to say. I've okay. never made a live where I do A story. Here you go. With 10,000 followers, you should know how to do a story. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Are you ready? No. <laughs> well, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to count to three, 
And even if it's not perfect, you know what? It's better than nothing. So it's, on three, it's going to be record. That I want, you I said you wanted to speak to some of them and help them and see what's going on. I'm so afraid. What That's all you have to say. Speak from the heart. Say, hey, I want to speak to some of you. Let me know if you'd be interested. Done. This is something I've been okay, putting let's off. Do it. Let's do it. Whatever happens, <laughs> there's no redos. It's a one take, one shot. But can we just let one second after finishing, not that they think I'm to totally... No? Okay. You, you we're don't. dropping it and we're making it authentic and real as it should be. If you're scared, you can even say, hey, I'm scared. If you run out of things to say, you're like, I actually know what I'm going to say. But it'll be the realest thing you ever posted. Okay. <clears throat> you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Hi, hier ist Jenny. Ihr seht jetzt zum ersten Mal mein Gesicht. Ich frage mich nicht, wie ich in die Situation gekommen bin. Ähm, ich bin jetzt in der Situation und ich wollte euch nur sagen, dass ähm, ich mal tierisch Bock hätte, mit euch live zu gehen, mit euch ähm, zu reden, schreiben. Und ähm, ja, jetzt habe ich es getan. <lacht> And it is posted. Congratulations. It feels fucking crazy, really. <laughs> also, it feels good. It feels... Amazing. Oh, God. Absolutely okay. amazing. It feels... It's, it's exciting. What's that voice saying? I feel alive. Also, I, it's, it's a feeling like... Um, I don't know. I'm even not afraid anymore standing here, so it's... Uh, <laughs> There's a shift in the way you're talking. Yeah, because I'm so proud that... As you did it, but that I did it. No, 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 no. What did I do? I just pressed record. I didn't do anything. I know what makes me so happy. You did it. Because this was really my real me. I would never have done this the next 10 years. So, but the universe wanted me to be here this evening, <laughs> and this situation gave me a chance to make something out of it, which is really me. And therefore, I'm really grateful. Thank yes. you. Yes. Well, you're welcome. One more hand. <laughs> now, a few, a few last things. But for everyone here, this look and feeling is what I live for. This is why I do what I do. That's literally why I also said, I don't care if you cry or whatnot, I want to get to the realness, because otherwise it's just talk. I'm not here to just talk, 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 talk. Like, sure, there's some talk to explain things, but literally the only reason I'm here is like, let's get to at least some change. Now, this look here, you got a reference. Will this be permanent? No. No. You will revert back to the default, which is what you usually think on a day-to-day -day basis. You might go home tonight, you might still feel a little bit of the high, maybe some doubts will kick in like, should I delete it? Oh no, tomorrow, what did I do? <laughs> but this is where you must remind yourself of a few things. Number one, you got a reference experience that it's possible that you can do it. I didn't do it, you did it. That's why I didn't even talk. I just pressed, anyone could press the little button. You talked, you said what you wanted to say, you put it out there, you also could have stopped me at any time. And you didn't, meaning you did it. So take in the reference, meaning if I do that, if I clap my hands once, um, can I clap my hands again? Yeah. Are you sure? I don't know if I physically can, everyone. <laughs> You're like, no, you, you have proof that you did it once, you can do it again. You have proof right now, physically, that you could do this. Meaning when your mind kicks in, because it will, and saying, ah, you can't do this, it's not for you, you're like, I clapped my hands once. You did it. You also have proof that nothing bad happened and people actually resonated and cheered you on. And just like, and take this in too, you were talking about that Instagram video where it's like, oh, I don't feel good enough. Well, you just right now inspired everyone here the same way. Yeah. How powerful and awesome is that? Like if you think of having just an impact on the world, there's your impact. Then, everyone here, if people resonate, they'll respond to it. They'll say, yeah, we want to talk, and you can take it from there. And this is the thing, if you're stuck, anything's better than nothing. 
even if it isn't perfect, even if you kind of make a mistake and mess up, it's better than just staying still and waiting. So try it and then learn. Get your hands dirty. You learn by, it's like trying to walk without wanting to fall over. That's what humans do. We're just lying on the ground like, I want to fall. It's like, no, you got to fall over to learn how to stand straight. And then take in what it feels like here, the thoughts. You could think of, uh, this is what we call a state high or a seminar high. It's like you shooting out of your comfort zone and seeing things in a different light, which is also why you were talking differently. Like, oh my God, it's like you kind of pierce through the clouds. So make a mental note. What does this feel like? How am I thinking? How do I even view myself? Or how am I being in this moment? So that you remember when you eventually fall back. To make it permanent, it's a longer journey. That's the deep inner work, the letting go. But here you got a proof that you could do it. And you had the willingness to go from just sitting down there to standing up here and doing this crazy thing you would have put off, like you said, for 10 years. So it's beautiful, it's amazing. And a final, final note, some people may hate this. This is the darker side. We talked about this. You might get some comments saying, what is this? What do you mean you want to talk to us? You creep. Why would we want to talk to you? And what's this? Your, your seminar? What kind of weirdo are you at a seminar? And look at these weirdos in the crowd. They don't even look cool. <laughs> that could happen. People will hate you no matter what. By the way, we were saying, you found me on TikTok. The craziest thing I've seen on TikTok is I made a, it was one TikTok where I literally just said something about being successful and some concept. Very vanilla. And even that one got hate where someone's, a few people were actually like, I don't like how he uses the term successful. <laughs> and I was like, what? Because then it kind of shames people who aren't successful. It puts this label where they feel bad. I'm like, <laughs> you can't even use the words. So if people are going to hate the word successful, you can do whatever. Some people are going to hate it. And that's okay. And that's fine. It's okay. Same here. Some people think that that's okay. And that is also for all of you, how you know once more you're authentic. Authenticity is polarizing. I'd write that down. It's polarizing. Meaning it will make people love you and make people hate you. Inauthenticity is land and that's where everyone just likes you but no one will ever love you they'll just like you like yeah yeah eh. bring some rawness some realness it, it has this magnet magnet effect some will love it some will hate it same here hey if you doing this you lose another 500 followers you should be celebrating because those aren't the wrong followers you don't want them you don't want anyone and everyone to like you it's hey if you truly resonate with me, great. If not, no hard feelings. We determined fast that there's no chemistry, even on social media. This here is why, by the way, if you follow me, I go so hard on just being authentic, knowing that it will repel a lot of people, and it does. But then it attracts the right people. And then I also don't have to hide, because if I embrace all my weirdness, you've already seen it all. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, you've seen it all. Okay, cool. I can be me. I'm chill. You've already seen it. Same here. Now they're seeing a bit more of you. Keep leaning into it and be willing to lose the wrong people. And that too. Although it might hurt to be rejected for who you are, key quote, what sucks a lot more is when you're only accepted when you're someone that you're not. So once more, give her a hand, everyone. <laughs> Amazing. Bring it in. Amazing. Thank you so much. Respect. The one benefit I really have as a coach is I get to see the behind the scenes of a lot of people. Meaning, if all of you, let's do it for fun, 10 seconds, just look at the crowd. Look at yourselves. Like, turn around and just look at the people around you. Go for it. You look around, you see the faces, you see the smiles. Like, look into their eyes. Like, you can stare. You have, my permission to stare at everyone around you, right? You think you may see people for who they are. And sure, to some extent, you do. But you're still seeing certain fronts. Meaning, in this room, you're all still pretending to some extent. You were still pretending to some extent until you were up here. And then there was some realness that came out. And everyone resonated. 
Your friends pretend to some extent. Your family pretends to some extent. We all do. We all have these different roles. And it's very easy to think that what you're dealing with, what you're going through is unique to you. I'm the only one going through with this. And your mind will tell you that too. Your mind will tell you, you're so different. You're so broken. Look at everyone else. It's so easy for them. They have it so much better. What's wrong with you? Why couldn't you just be like everyone else? Anyone ever have those thoughts? Just me? <laughs> I had those thoughts. Literally, for the longest time, I was like, why couldn't I just be like everyone else? And it's kind of this vague thing, everyone else. Like even in school, like all my friends, they're all like on this, this kind of frequency and here's me. Or even if I was talking to a group, by the way, it always felt like there was this invisible wall. And this here, even linked to loneliness is key. We always think on a surface level, loneliness is being alone, no friends. That's not true. You could have a lot of friends and still feel very lonely. You're surrounded, but you just, again, there's this wall and you just can't really connect. And I always thought it was just me. Biggest thing I realized as a coach is by, just like you, talking to people, um, especially uh, whether it's online in private groups or one-on-one, -on -one, is people drop the fronts and I get to see the behind the scenes of most people. And no joke, what I saw is one, holy shit, are people fucked up inside. I knew it, but I didn't really know it. Like, it even put in perspective my issues where I'm like, I'm a little privileged. Like, I thought it was bad, but there are levels to this. It's honest truth. I was like, oh. And what's most personal is most universal. Meaning all of my issues, I saw other people with the exact same issues. And what it reinforce? You're not alone. And that's the biggest lie that we buy into. It's just me. No, it isn't. Every single thing you think, it's just me, everyone else is thinking too. That's the behind the scenes. Everyone resonates with it, yet we all hide it. It's like we're the weirdest species. We're just like, we all have this one issue, but we're all alive. We're all going to pretend we don't have it. And we're going to go about our lives. If suddenly the whole, like, population just stopped and just for a day it was like let's just stop pretending we could actually all get to work it's crazy and this is also why i do what i do it's also why i love doing these live demonstrations and just showing it and normalizing it like notice how even some of this most people are like i could never i would never it's like well why are you placing this fear and shame label around it if it's actually what's going on own it and it comes down to that rule Whose well-being comes first? Mine. Yeah, yours. <laughs> I even, in a surface level exercise, I'll tell sometimes clients like, hey, the best time to let go is when you're the most triggered, right? And we'll get to this, long event. Um, and I tell them, well, they're like, well, okay, when, when letting go, I usually recommend a guided meditation, one of my guided meditations. And I remember vividly, there was a client, well, sometimes when I get triggered around social anxiety, I'm out in public. You're walking down the sidewalk, you're in the street, I'm triggered. What do I do? And I told him, well, why don't you just sit down on the sidewalk and do a release? And he was like, well, people might stare at me and judge me. Well, what's more important, your own well-being or what some strangers think of you? And then you just notice how often we just sacrifice our own well-being just to fit in or just for the approval of people we don't care about or won't even see again. If everyone suddenly started and people pleasers hate it, it's like, not me, not my own well-being first, that's selfish. If we all did that, we'd start getting to work and things would be a lot better. So take this with you, okay? And we'll be doing a lot more, but this is really the message that I try to put out there and ultimately what I shifted a lot of my teachings to. And trust me, I know about disapproval more than 99.9% .9 of people alive. For those who've been following me for a while, you know that. For those who don't, you're in for a surprise. <laughs> Trust me, I, I used to chase validation like crazy. That was the false god that I worshipped. I always thought that the more people would like me, the more likes I'd get early on in my coaching career, the more views I'd get, finally I could love myself. And I chased it and I chased it and then it got ripped away. And then I was faced with a decision where it's either it's going to destroy me or I'm going to have to let go. 
And fortunately, I let go and had a glimpse of what I was after all along. And we'll talk about this too. It's not about chasing this validation. Ultimately, whatever you're chasing out there, this is a rule. Whatever you're chasing out there, it's because you're craving it in here. And you don't want it from out there, you want it from in here. The more you chase approval out there, the more it signals you need to approve of yourself. Literally, that's the rule. Whatever you need, it's signaling you need to give that to you, not someone else, not another situation, you. And there's nothing blocking you from that except for your own resistance, which fortunately you can process.